Hi, it's Mike with Utastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2015, and I'm standing here with Chad Fowler, who's giving the closing keynote for the event. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me, Chad. Uh, so what is the story, you, what is the message you want people to take away from your keynote? Well, I'm going to tell a story uh, of the recreation of Wonderlist, which is the app that I work on, mm -hmm. app and service. Um, so it's going to be a story, uh, literally in that sense, one of those kind of here's what happened. Um, mm -hmm. Hero's journey. From I hope so, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if, if there's a hero yet. The humble but, task uh, list <laughs> rises up to become the wonder yeah. list. And it rises up from the flames, literally. Um, but, yeah, my, my overarching message is that uh, I... I'm sort of on a mission in my career to learn how to build software that can outlive me mm -hmm. and outlive us, uh, ideally without us dying prematurely. So um, I'm going to talk about some of the things that I've learned in my career and that I've applied on this most recent project uh, in hopes that they inspire ideas in other people um, that they can create software that can survive longer. Yeah, that's, that is one of the, sometimes I think, things that people, we try not to think about the, the mortality of, of our work. Mm -hmm. it's, it, 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 I don't know if my work's going to survive the next framework upgrade, yeah. much less be able to go into the future and support you know, something that might actually be useful for my kids. Well, most of our work actually doesn't survive even the project. It's never born. So yeah. you know, that's the sad thing. Most of the work that we do in the software industry is stillborn, or not even mm -hmm. that. It's just canceled. You know, if you look at the Standish Chaos Report, which is, of course, kind of a maligned thing, but mm -hmm. everyone references it, uh, and it, it feels directionally correct, most software projects either fail uh, or are significantly challenged. And by the Standish language, I would say significantly challenged means failed. Mm -hmm. So most projects basically fail that we work on. And then, as you and I know, we build software and we tend to have to throw it away. Someone has to throw it away right. at some point in the not-so-distant future. So if most projects fail most, and then things that get launched, they live maybe five years, it's kind of like you, you spend all this time, this passion, this energy of your life working on stuff that is ultimately kind of meaningless. So that's sad. Yeah. And uh, I've spent a large portion of my career euthanizing software systems, mm -hmm. going into a situation, finding a dying or sick system, and trying to humanely put it to sleep. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm tired of doing that. Yeah. So, I, you know, are you going to be looking at some of our tools of use, or is it mostly about techniques? Or It's, it's mostly about architecture. Mm -hmm. um, I... The thing that has inspired me the most is uh, looking at how biological systems work, mm -hmm. specifically like human bodies, how someone like I can still be alive mm -hmm. after 41 years, um, given the poor maintenance that I've done in the system. And uh, yeah, take some of those metaphors of like cellular regeneration and homeostasis mm -hmm. and apply them to software architectures. Yeah. And I think that's the main, main kind of over, overriding theme. Like I'm going to talk about microservices, but I don't really care about that term. Mm -hmm. And I think it's silly for people to be excited about the term. Um, it's more about creating an architecture where the system can evolve and change frameworks, like you mentioned, or even change languages, technologies, whatever. And the system can still live through all these things, even if the components are being regenerated on yeah. a regular basis. Well, I mean, thinking about a lifetime of software and, and whether it evolves, I mean, uh, one thing is, from what I understand, the human body basically, after a certain number of decades, has completely replaced all the cells except for some really core stuff in our marrow. Uh, you know, software, yeah, when you're saying alive, that... If it if it if it um, is just being refactored, not entirely just replaced outright, I mean, is that still staying alive, or is a rewrite just another way of perpetuating the ideas that were inside of the original software? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends on how you think of it, of course. Mm -hmm. Although uh, I would say that the the parallels of a rewrite to cellular generation they don't really map. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when when a rewrite occurs, though the ideas still exist. The software is completely replaced. It usually looks and behaves differently. You know, it doesn't have to, but almost always does because that's how rewrites go. Uh, so, to me, the, the ability to have the, the system continue to stand in place and continue to work is an important part of 
considering it to have lived or survived. Right. You know? So uh, you're right. You know the the idea that, that you know here we are. Uh, you're Mike and I'm Chad, and we're the same people that we were when we were born, but not really. Yeah. Not the same physical substance. That's what I'm getting at. Um, notably. We didn't notice, we didn't feel when the cells were regenerated, and no one around us noticed. There wasn't an impact on our continuing to function, actually it improved our function. That's the way systems should evolve and the systems should survive. Well, I, I can also look at that as kids, as a parent, I'm watching, I am watching that evolution of the cells changing in, in over years, and it, you do, I mean, you might not feel it on a day-to-day -day basis because it happens so slowly. I, I mean, I don't know if that has any kind of corollary to the idea of the evolution of software um, and, and that even though it's changing it's still the same entity <laughs> but it's slowly changes it develops it gets a little bit stronger and eventually after a while well I mean everything dies and yeah. it, it gets, it gets weaker yeah. yeah it gets weaker it gets sicker so sure some you know and there's also there's something to be said. Like I, I used to think about, what if we could just build software so quickly that it didn't matter? We could just throw it away. Right. So then we don't worry about longevity of software. And now I'm sort of meeting the middle where you can build components so quickly you can throw them away, and you should. But um, you know, so over time the system might be irrelevant, and that's when it should die, mm -hmm. not when the implementation is irrelevant. Right. Okay. Uh, I can imagine in software systems, depending on who's working on them and how focused they are, and all sorts of other factors. They might get weaker over time if, if they were to evolve in this way. Or maybe subsystems would get weaker over time, but you would then notice that they're weaker and you would work on them in the same right. way that a doctor would work on a patient or you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, you get bad knees. Okay, we're going to just replace those. We don't have to replace, <laughs> yeah. we don't have to take you out back and pull an old yeller and, yeah. and, <laughs> and then <laughs> say, oh, well, we built a new one that has new knees. So. <laughs> but, uh, well, anyway, thank you very much for taking the time speaking. Yeah, I appreciate thanks. it. Sounds like a fascinating keynote. Looking forward to it. I hope so.